Okay. Thank you, Ms. Barbara. So let's start with our exercise. As always, I'm gonna grab my remote so that we can zoom in where we need to zoom. And because I think we can take a little tighter view on this one. Let's zoom in a little. All right, so I cannot stress this enough. This is your 30, 60, 90 triangle. So you've got a 30 degree angle, a 60 degree angle, and a 90 degree angle. You cannot do this exercise without this piece of equipment. For our exercise, as always, we start and half by a piece of paper. And We'll put on it. We'll start as always by lining in our exercise title block, which has a one half inch border. All the way around. And a three quarter inch box at the bottom for labeling. And as always, I am going to light line in and block out this title block, but I'm going to refine it at the end. Sorry, let's make this straight for your So we've got our title block. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make our four basic shapes. And this is just a summary of exactly what's in your assignment. So our first one is going to be a cube. Well, actually, first of all, let's talk scale. 
So we're going to do this exercise. Improve our focus a little. in half inch scale. So we're looking for this one half. So at half inch scale, I'm gonna draw a cube with all sides that are three foot zero. I find with the isometrics, that the easiest plane to start with is the leading front edge. Particularly for this type of shape. And you'll notice if you go back to those YouTube tutorials, that's typically where they started as well. So I'm going to put in a line for my front edge. And then I'm going to measure three feet. And I feel like I might not have given myself enough space for that. So I'm going to start a little lower. And then I'm going to mark off one, two, three feet. Make it a little bit darker. Let's double check I got that right. One, two, three. Does everybody see that? Now I need to draw the sides. And again, one side is gonna go 30 degrees this way, and one is gonna go 30 degrees that way. So looking at my little box here, I just drew the front edge 30 this way and 30 that way. And then I'm going to measure three feet in each direction. One, two, three. And one, two, three. That's how I've now rendered the bottom edge is going back. Now I'm going to take my next edges up. Notice I don't have any lines horizontally. Those are now banished from our world for the time that we're working in isometric. This is only existing to give us an edge to make the other ones against. So now, three feet up. Three feet up. And then I'm going to go back to the top. And look, I just gave myself my leading edge with that because if I connect these, they're going to line up along my ISO. And if I measure, they're going to be three feet. So that's how the geometry came together. I have the measurement for that line without having to do it because I'm working in a simple cube. Does everyone see how that came together? Pretty nifty. The same thing will happen over here. And I can double check the measurement to know that I'm right. But sure enough, one, two, three.
And now I can do the back edge of the top. And if I'm very careful to place my pencil and bring my tool to my pencil and be sure that I'm being exact with my lines, I'll notice that when I had taken this leading edge line up, these met there. So if I measure sure enough, my three feet is gonna meet right there at the top. So I don't even have to double check that. And since I have a mess of lines here, I'll go back now to finish this shape and I'll darken it. And now I have shape A, a cube with all sides at three feet. And I can just come over here. label that A. The next one, B, is a box with a height of one sixth, but a length and depth of two feet. So I'm going to do that one over here, and it'll be the same method. I'll start with a height line. But this time it's one foot six. So I got to go and do my feet and inches. So six inches and one foot. I know there are some of you who are who had some trouble with the detail drawing and are still training your brain to switch from scale to scale to scale. Hopefully doing this exercise and then our other projections of our island back to back in two different scales will continue to cement being able to flip around and work with any dimension on your scale. The more that you do that, the easier it will become. So we've marked out our one foot six. Our length and depth are going to be two feet. Same method. We're going to project out the lines first and then measure them. Make sure you're at the right scale. Two feet. Two This is the great thing about ISO because we have a lot of the geometry is going to help us with the drawing. So we can pop up our foot and a half and 
foot and a half. And these dots are going to be lined up. We did our drawing correctly. And when we draw our guidelines, coming up these angles, they're going to meet in the right place. So the point where they meet is going to be lined up with our other point. So we don't even have to measure, but if we want to be sure we can, and sure enough, we're going to get two feet and two feet. So again, we can go back. And we're fine. And that is shape C complicates it just a little bit more. The height's only a foot. It has some variation to the length and depth. So our height's only a foot. Our length doesn't come out too far. I'm choosing to do length in this direction and depth in this direction. It wouldn't necessarily be wrong to do it the other way. This makes the most sense to me. I'm gonna make sure I take this guy line out a little longer because I know that's a longer side. So I'm gonna measure this one at one foot and six inches. And the other one at three feet and six inches. Six inches and one, two, three feet. but I'm still going to come up the same height. I'm still coming over at the same angle. So as long as I have this dot in the right spot, I can actually put these lines in and I don't even need to verify this height because it's still going to come out to be a foot. As long as I start with the foot and I'm working properly with my scale, my drawing will actually tell me where it needs to go without my even having to measure. That's your reward for practicing the guideline method because you can make those guidelines and look at where they meet and it's going to give you the correct sized shape. Now note, because we varied both of these, these two points aren't lining up and that's okay. That's correct for this particular object. So don't always fall into this line being the one that's gonna give you 
But if you start off all your bases, you're still going to end up in the correct measurement. So sure enough, I'm three foot six and one foot six. And I can go back and refine my shape. So this is an example of having a proper drawing foundation can support you in refining the drawings correctly. And there you go. So that is C. That's that easy. Now D is a little more complicated. D, we've got a little bit more funky of a shape and it's a little bigger. So it may end up actually overlapping with this one and that's okay. Or it might run to the edge of my page and that's okay too. Because you need to pick a leading edge as I'm teaching you to refine these from a leading edge. So I'm gonna pick, I'm suggesting that you use this edge as your leading edge and start there. Now we are doing a shape that looks like this, looks like this, but then it's five feet deep. So if we were looking at one of those, um, what's the term for it in our lecture? The term is, I'll get you the term in a second so I can tie it back into our lecture. But we're, if we were looking at it in one of those views, it would be projecting back five feet. like this. Like that. But we're going to actually draw it oriented. So now that you understand what the shape looks like, the way we'll draw it is we'll start with that front face. And some of the students don't always understand the map on this. I think I may have made the map a little more clear for you on Canvas. But if this is two foot six, then each of these other faces is also two foot six. So on Canvas, I give you a little bit more of the dimension information. And then the way I just sketched it for you is this little sketch would be if I was doing one of these oblique views of it, but I'm going to do an isometric view of it. So we're going to see the face of that plane going back. So we're going to start with that leading edge. And it's two foot six. So six inches and two feet. I'm five feet along here, and I have five feet of depth. So 
So I have five feet of length and five feet of depth. So I'm going to draw back my length and depth guidelines. That means as long enough. Let's see. I may overlap my border just a little bit here. I think it'll fit on my page. So let's measure. Five feet going here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, right on the guideline. Darken that so I don't lose it. It's intersecting right at my guideline. So now on this side, I'm going up five feet. On this side, I'm only going up two and a half. And then I'm only going over in this direction. I'm replicating the space. So I'm only going two and a half over here. Before I'm going up. And if I measure, when I measure, five feet up here, and two and a half from here, when I, add, when I use my angle, those should fall on the same line. And sure enough, they do. So now, I have replicated this face in an isometric view. Now my depth going back is five feet on all of these. So I've already put it in here. I'm gonna go back along here. Back along here. back along here and then measure five feet five feet So next all that, I just have to think of which direction these are going to make sure that I have my triangle oriented the correct way. So 
finish off next. And now I can go back, darken. As I darken, you can start seeing my shape coming into focus. And there you go. And that is okay. And then you'll go back, darken up the title block. Info. Exercise. You, of course, put in your name, the title of this exercise, which is Isometric Shapes. And if you execute this correctly, now you'll have the ins and outs of using this angle and the straight angle to create lines and create shapes. Does everyone understand how I just generated that? Ask me questions now if you do not. Yeah, I'm good. All good? I'm good. All right. Thanks for speaking up for everybody. All right, I'm going to do a quick pause and then restart on the recording so that you can just watch the island part if you don't want to watch this part again or watch them separately. <laughs> 